The first wreck on our tour is the Dunderberg. The Dunderberg is one of the best examples of a Great Lakes schooner to be found anywhere in the lakes. Built in Detroit in 1867, she was working only her second season on the lakes when she was struck by the steamer Empire State and sank. She's upright and mostly intact on the bottom at about 150 feet. Her most prominent and famous feature is her bow. The Dunderberg boasts an intact bowsprit complete with carved alligator figurehead. It's really unusual for a working class ship like the Dunderberg to have been fitted with such a figurehead. Working ships were more about utility than ornamentation. Swimming down the deck from bow towards the stern, we pass by a hatch and the hole where the forward mast once stood. The fife rail that once encircled the mast is still there. And slightly behind that stands the remains of a bilge pump. The decking is in very good condition, though littered with rigging, booms, and pieces of masts. Reaching midships, we see the capstan and the mainmast, which is still partially standing. As we reach the stern, we find the broken remains of the cabin and stub of the mizzenmast. Dropping over the stern, we see the rudder has been dislodged and is leaning against the hull. Beginning our swim back to the bow, we swim along the starboard rail. Near midships, we encounter the collision damage. A large triangular hole. With the size of this hole, it's easy to see why she sank so quickly. Dropping through one of the many open hatches, we survey the inside. The ship is one big space from bow to stern, with plenty of sunlight entering through the hatches. Studying the construction of the hull, we see the hanging knees attached to the top of the hull that support the deck. What's left of her cargo of corn lies molding in the bottom of her hole. We swim past the collision hole, once again marveling at how much damage the Empire State inflicted on the Dunderbird. We swim forward to the next cargo hatch and ascend back out onto the deck. We continue forward past fallen rigging to get back to the bow. Approaching the bow, we see both anchors the windlass, and lots of anchor chain. Dropping over the side, we swim around her majestic bow once again. Visibility is excellent, easily 80 feet from the bowsprit to the divers.
The price you pay for such an amazing dive is time. Decompression time spent hanging on the ascent line. But once we're out of the water, it's back to Harbor Beach. While the weather can certainly be unpredictable, there's nothing better than a beautiful day out on Lake Huron.